Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. My name is Bill Soroka. I am the best-selling author of Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent, and I'm the founder of the Notary Business Builder Advanced Training Community. It's a true gift to be able to introduce you to our guest today, John Braddock. He's the creator of My Life and Wishes, a legacy, an online secure legacy vault. During my recent health crisis, when I came as close to death as I had ever been in my life so far, My Life and Wishes Legacy Vault was the one of the only pieces of my end of life plan that was actually in place. And it brought such peace of mind to me knowing that my family would at least know where all of my accounts, important documents, passwords, all that stuff that is a complete mess sometimes when somebody leaves this earth too early to actually try to find and track that stuff down. It brought me peace of mind knowing that they would at least know where that stuff was. Now, I know talking about our own death isn't always pleasant. It's not always easy. But by not doing so, we do our families and loved ones a great disservice. And it can tarnish the legacy that we've worked so hard to build. So today I'm going to invite the creator and the founder of My Life and Wishes to the stage so he can show you exactly how to use this online vault to protect your legacy and make life easier for your family. John, come on up and say hello. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone across this great nation today? I, I see hands up. All right. Oh, looking good. Cheers. <laughs> I see a couple of faces that I know from uh, from previous times. So those of you who I know already, great to see you. Happy New Year. And looking forward to uh, getting to know so many more people. Yeah, we're going to have a great training today, guys. Let me lay it out uh, how this will work for you today. So first, John, I'll turn the stage over to John. He's going to go over a brief uh, introduction overview about what my life and wishes actually is in, the, in much more detail than I can do. And then he's going to actually uh, go through and show you how to use it, how to load your information, how to take that giant elephant of a project and break it down into tiny little bite-sized pieces so you can work on it and gradually um, have the tool that you need to make life easier for your family. The cool thing is you are welcome and encouraged to actually participate with us. If you're in a place to do so right now, uh, John's got a 100% free trial for My Life and Wishes. I'm going to put the link inside the chat for you. This is for anybody who's not an NBB member. If you happen to be a notary business builder uh, member, you already know that you get My Life and Wishes courtesy of John Braddock. Uh, as uh, a complimentary in your in, in the program. But for those of you who are not part of MVP, you have a free trial. You can log on. You don't even need a credit card to sign up for it. I posted the link. So if you'd like to join us today and walk through these steps and see how easy this actually is, I encourage you to do so. Then after John runs through the, uh, the different buckets that he's got listed in his platform, we're going to open it up for Q&A. So you can actually ask live questions direct to me or to John, who is the creator of this platform. And he's also going to share some, some cool new changes that are coming up to the platform too, and some enhancements as well. So we are excited for that. So like I said, you can join us right now. The link is in the chat. If you're listening without access to the chat, it's just mylifeandwishes.com. Jump in there, join along with us. John, I'm going to invite you back up and turn it over to you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm going to jump right in because I know everyone probably has a very busy day today already. And um, so real quickly, while I pull this up, what I, what I wanted to say is what, what, what really created this is when my father-in-law died, who lived literally right up the street from us, it took us a year to track everything down, find documents, insurance policies. And it was like uh, scavenger hunt on steroids, okay? And what really occurred to me is if something happened to me, if I didn't make it home tonight, would my family have everything that they need to know or am I going to create a total nightmare 
for them in trying to find things. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, leave a really crappy legacy for my family. So we invented the platform uh, to do just that. So if I don't make it home tonight, things are super simple for my family. Now, I'm going to show you how to start your account and what to do, but I want to show you as an example, if I didn't make it home tonight, my daughter in Florida finds out dad didn't make it home. She can log in to her account and she would be inside my account. And this is what she'd see. Boom, there's personal information, financial, family, my advisors, my documents, end of life wishes. Well, what does dad want? She could click on that immediately, go to funeral arrangements. And she could know that dad wants to be cremated and we should call Crest Funeral Home and cremation, um, disposition of the ashes and those kind of things. My goodness, she's probably gonna have to know who my advisors are, who's my estate planning attorney. She can go to the advisor section and immediately go, okay, here's dad's uh, financial broker. Here's his accountant. Oh, here's the estate planning attorney. We better call them because we're going to need their assistance in getting things done. Well, what about it? His, his documents? Does he have life insurance? So they could click on the documents section, go to documents and find out. Okay, let's see. Copies of dad's birth certificate, his medical records, his military discharge papers. Oh, there's notes to family in here. Oh, he's got a will. It's in here. We know there's a supporting document. My daughter in Florida would be immediately able to pull up a copy of that and save it to her uh, technology, smartphone, tablet, laptop, et cetera. Everything in the hands. My biggest pet peeve in the world is website login. How, how are they going to take down my Facebook account so that every year they don't keep getting reminded, wish dad a happy birthday and dad's dead, right? So this is where we list all those things and things that are on recurring and auto pay like Amazon Prime and AT&T for the cell bill and Audible and my Facebook account. And, and geez, you know, instead of calling Facebook and dealing with them, I'm providing them with my username, my password, challenge questions in case they're asked and telling them what to do. Upon my death, delete this thing or memorialize it and monitor it and giving them all those instructions. How do they get into my Gmail, my Google Drive, my 1Password password manager, right? Uh, and all these things uh, that go on and they're all stored uh, in the site. They'll know where I bank. And they'll have access to all the bank accounts. Oh, and by the way, the places where I hide money that no one knows, like my grandfather taught me, under the mattress, which is a great place. Uh, you know, the brown jacket in the bedroom closet where I keep my poker money. So all those things are there. And so this is what a site looks like when something happens to a family member. And I think you'll all agree that having all that information immediately at their fingertips would be a godsend and would save them weeks, if not months, and in some cases, possibly years on how to access everything. All right, now let's go and create an account. So the link that Bill put in at mylifeandwishes.com, if you go to the upper right-hand corner and click try it for free, um, there's a, uh, uh, we'll take you right to this page. I'm on Bill's page, so you can see it has a uh, uh, notary business builder uh, in the top. So what you do is very simple. You know, we're gonna put in, uh, we're gonna put in our name into the account. First, last. You wanna put in your email address. And then you're gonna to wanna to create a password. Now, the password has to be at least eight characters long, have at least one number and one special character. And right below there's this password bar. So until this, instead of it being red, is totally dark green across, then you'll know your password is acceptable. So, you know, I'll just use password we should never use. 
Okay, and now I have a dark green. I also have to prove I am not a robot. I hope that's a J. Otherwise, I could be a robot. We can agree to the terms, and we create an account. Now, a couple of things are going to happen. The first thing that will come up will be um, a pop-up that says, hey, would you like to secure your account using two-factor authentication? I strongly encourage people to use two-factor authentication. I prefer text message over email because sometimes, depending on who your, your email client is, the uh, uh, code might end up in, in promotion or clutter or junk or somewhere like that. So text message is always best. So you can initially set that up right from the start. I'm going to skip this for now because I'll show you where you can enter it from inside. <clears throat> The next thing it's going to ask you is, hey, would you like to add a co-owner? Your co-owner is your spouse, your life partner, that person that you want to have equal access to be able to store his or her documents there as well, keep things updated. Um, in my case, my wife is the co-owner because she's the only one out of the two of us that will actually uh, make the changes and do all the updates that she, she needs to do uh, within the account. You can do that by entering their first, last name, their email address, picking a security question like, hey, where did we meet? Or where did we go on our honeymoon? And what will happen is when you shoot that out, they will get an email. It'll take them to a page. They'll have to answer that security question. And then they can uh, create their own password to log in. You can skip this initially, which I'll do now because I'll show you again where you can enter that inside. And then it says, boom, success. You're ready to start entering information. And so now we have this nice uh, clean account where a few minutes ago we looked under documents and we saw all those documents I had stored to make family easy, uh, things easier for family. Uh, you'll see you click on these tabs. It says there's nothing in here. So we have a fresh account. We have put everything into very intuitive buckets for people, personal, financial, family. And under each bucket, there are sub buckets or subcategories. So under personal, we have our personal information, healthcare providers, employer information, education, financial, we have the bank accounts, our debt obligations or loans, credit cards, investments. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna go to account settings uh, initially. So that's down in the lower left. And under account settings, this is kind of the control panel, okay? So account info under this drop down, this is going to be you, the owner. So it's going to be your first, last name, your email address. You can change your email address here if you need to. You can also update and change your password. This is also where if you skipped it initially, you can enable your two-factor authentication by simply clicking manage. Then you can enter in a cell phone number for text, save changes, you immediately get a text, you'll enter that code and it'll be stored for you. Now this says this account does not yet have a co-owner. So we skip that on the front end, but we can add that co-owner uh, to the account right here, their first, last name, their email address. Again, choose the security uh, question, provide your answer, and the email will go out to them. One thing to point out, if, if we go into any section at the moment and click on it, there's just one tab because I don't have a co-owner listed. But as soon as I add a co-owner, there'll be two more tabs. The first one will say John, the second one will say whatever the name of my co-owner is, and the third tab will say shared. So in my case, I have my logins and accounts and documents stored, Michelle has hers in there, and then things that we have jointly, such as our trust documents, et cetera, those are in the shared document. So it's a very clean and easy way to manage 
uh, old documents. Under account settings, again, there's authorized users. This is that person who, if I didn't make it home, I would want to have access to the account. Now, adding a co-owner is easy. It's their first, last name, their email, and then you as the owner can choose what they can see and or edit within your account. Many times this is a responsible adult child, maybe a highly trusted sibling. Um, now, Michelle and I have six children between us. Um, I don't trust any of them. <laughs> so uh, only because children are curious and nosy, right? So obviously I would never give my children the ability to edit anything within my account. But let's say my son, Nick, I've got him added as an authorized user. And he knows he's an authorized user. And hey, if something bad happens to dad, log in. Well, let's say today he's bored and he goes to log in. He'll get a pop-up that says, hey, Nick, you are about ready to access your dad's account. He will be notified immediately. Would you like to continue? And then there's the, uh, the nuclear button. It's like, nope, not going there. And you can exit out, no harm, no foul. But if an authorized user does log into your account, the owner of the account immediately gets an email saying, hey, your account has just been accessed by the individual, time and date stamped, and the IP address in which it came from, which gives me the ability to pick the phone up, call my son, and say, hey, dude, I'm still alive. Why are you in the account? Um, then we always have the ability to go in and manage our authorized users so we can go in, we can change their permissions, we can totally delete them. Uh, from the account. So you have total control over who would be able to see that. Okay, now, also, now I'm on a free trial. And as I look in my account settings, it says you're currently on day one of your free trial. Now, if I want to upgrade my account within the 30 days, I can click on this upgrade to a paid subscription. There's two plans, there's a monthly and annual. Now, Bill has arranged for a discount uh, of uh, $30 off because usually the platform is $129 a year. But because of this whole notary uh, uh, group, you can get it for $99 a year, $30 off. And that's on the annual plan. And so what you would do is put in an offer code. And that offer code is for my family. And when you add that and apply it, it'll immediately discount your perpetual rate. Okay. And then at that point, when you're ready, you can go ahead and add your, your payment information. But you have 30 days and uh, you know, so, so, so no rush and you'll get a warning <laughs> as you get close to your 30 days. All right, so back in uh, account settings one last time, um, there's a print summary that's available, and it's not available during free trial. It's only available to annual paying subscribers. What the print summary is, is this gives you or your family the ability to create and download a full PDF of everything you have stored in the account. So you can imagine how much easier that would be for family when the time comes to be able to log in, download a full PDF, as opposed to perpetually logging in and out of the account to find the information that they need. Okay. <clears throat> let's go back to our home and let's just see how easy it is to enter information. So we start with the easy stuff first, right? Because that's the way I operate. So we go to personal information and I can click edit. And it'll ask me all the questions, you know, do I want to put my phone, my cell phone, work phone, primary email address is already in there. I can add a secondary. I can add my date of birth, my place of birth, my social security number, my driver's license number. We'll address security in a little bit, but in short, we are built on AES-256 military grade encryption platform. Uh, everything stored in the cloud not in physical hard servers in, in our office. 
Um, we store everything individually. So there's no uh, one place where if someone actually could hack in, they'd access everyone's information. And uh, we are a zero knowledge company. That means no one at My Life and Wishes can see anything anyone has put into their account other than we have access to your name and your email address so that we can communicate uh, with you. That being said, some people don't want to put a social security number in. Well, they don't have to because it's not a required field. So under every section, the only fields that are required are listed. And so in this case, it's only the name. Again, but providing the additional information might make things a little easier for family. There's a place for your addresses. So, you know, you can enter in uh, the address name. Well, that would be home. And you can put the address of home. You can save it. If you have a vacation home, you can add another home address and you can call it, you know, vacation home and put that address. We have some people that use this almost like an ancestry and they put like everywhere they've ever lived in it, um, which is actually kind of cool because my, my kids would have no idea all the places that I lived prior to them coming into the world, right? There's a place to list your physicians. Again, everything's intuitive. So adding a healthcare provider, you simply click on it. Who are they? Dr. Smith. What do they uh, treat? It's a dermatologist, their address, their phone number. Place for your employer information. So you can add an employer. Who's the company, the address, uh, you know, it might be your own business. I currently work there. We can check that. It changes down below to work dates. So it'd be when you started to, you know, it'd always be present. And then again, you can build out your work history here by putting in employment dates for previous employers uh, that you may have worked for. And same for education. Now, what I want to point out is whenever you're in any section, so this personal, there's this button that says, I'd like help. If I'm in financial, there's this button that says, I'd like help. When you click on that, it will open a new tab in your browser. It will take you immediately to that uh, section in our online help guide and give you some, some thoughts about things you might want to include and the importance of those things. And also by scrolling back to the top of the online help guide, there's a couple of uh, useful documents. Uh, there's a quick start, download, getting started guide. There's a full user guide that can be downloaded. As well as for the benefit of my 85 year old mother, there's a very short video on how to turn on two factor authentication. Bank accounts under financial. When we go to bank accounts, initially, and you've seen what it looks like full, okay? So adding them is very easy. It's checking, savings, or other. The only required fields are the account type and the financial institution. Again, we're building a roadmap for a family. The more information we provide, the better, but still having that roadmap makes things a lot easier. If we select other, there's one more required field. So we'd name it. So maybe it's a money market account. And then the financial institution name. And let's just say it's at Chase Bank. Okay. Now, that's all that's required. I'm building a map. But I could go further. And I could put the branch that I use, the address, tell them how I get statements. They're either email or physical mail. Where do I keep the, the checkbook? Those kind of things. Is there an ATM card associated with the account? I can provide a pin to that. And I can also link it uh, to my Chase Bank website where I put you know, Chase Bank, the URL, my username, password. And again, always, if you're going to provide login credentials, provide challenge questions. Because when someone tries to log in from a different IP address, they're going to be asked, uh, those challenge questions. Okay. <clears throat> There's a place for loans. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, older people don't have a lot of uh, loans. And it's like, well, you know what? Death is not just for old people. Uh, so we can provide 
uh, from the drop downs. Maybe it's an auto loan, the mortgage, home equity, student loan, or other. And again, the required fields would be what kind of loan, if it's other, what is it? Maybe it's a promissory note. And then who's the loan holder? So all you'd have to put, again, building a roadmap. The more information, the better, but this is just a way to get things going. And I'm often asked by people, because I'll have people who go through this and go, wow, there's so much stuff. And you know, you showed me your account and there's all those things and it's overwhelming and daunting. And it's gonna take me a lot of time. And you know, my answer is, you know what, I get it. It's valid. It is uh, sometimes perhaps overwhelming to think about. But if it's gonna be overwhelming for you and you know where all this stuff is, can you imagine how overwhelming it's gonna be family for family trying to track this stuff down if you don't do it? But it doesn't have to be hard. It can be simple. As I said, you know, we can go into a section. I can do this while I'm watching the football game on Sunday. Okay, I know what credit cards I have. So I have a MasterCard issuing bank uh, is with uh, Park Bank. And the name on the card is me. Now, I don't have my wallet with me. I'm watching football, right? I can come back to the other stuff. Just save it. Boom. Now they know I have that card. It makes it very, very easy to do the, the easy stuff. Just build out the, the map first. You know, investments, my kids wouldn't know, you know, if I had a 401k or where it was. Um, so investment name. So I have an IRA. And, and, and who's the holder? Or where is it? And it's LPL. Financial. Now I can provide where's the investment documentation, all that kind of stuff. But hey, I'm just building a roadmap. I'm making it simple. I'm just going to save it. And I also have the uh, I have a four hundred one k with principal financial. I don't know the value. I'm not going to put my account number. Don't need to. Save it. Boom. And I can just go, I could snap through this thing really quickly. We know what banks we bank at. We might not know all the uh, uh, account numbers off the top of the head, but that doesn't matter. Um, advisors. Your family's going to need to know who your attorney is. So, yeah. So Bob Smith at Smith Legacy Planning. And you might not know his address or phone number off the top of your head. Doesn't matter. Family can Google that, right? Find it and say, Bob, dad died. What do we do? Going to need help. You're probably also going to need to know who your uh, financial advisor or your insurance agent uh, is so we give you the drop downs the the insurance broker the financial broker who's the accountant they're gonna have to do a final tax return and the best person to do that final tax return is gonna be the accountant that did the tax return last year uh, spiritual advisor other advisor you know what kind of advisor are they <laughs> my weight loss coach and their name of course weight loss is gonna come pretty easy after I'm dead but um, okay, documents and accounts. This is the really important stuff. Um, it took us over two weeks to find my father-in-law's will. And when we did, interestingly enough, I said to my wife, I said, good news, bad news. The good news is I found the will. She said, what's the bad news? I said, the bad news is you're going to move to Milwaukee and live with Aunt Jean and Uncle Ed. That's how old that document was. So as you guys know, and the estate planning attorneys and such that you work with, it's critically important we keep them up to date. It's more important that family can find them. So we go to documents, and to add a document is really easy. What is it? It's my will. It's my POA, birth certificate, um, other records. And to do it, we simply click will, What's the location? So how does my family find it? You know, 
upper desk drawer in living room. Tell them where it is. But then make it one step easier. And this is, you know, an easy way to build out. We can just go ahead and save that right there. Now the family knows. Oh, the will's located in the upper desk drawer in the living room. Great. We know where to find it. But we can go a step further. And we can click upload supporting document. And then just grab a copy of it that you might have on your uh, computer. Or if you have flash drive with that information on it, put it on the computer, bring it up into the account and store that document. So it's there. You know, what other kind of documents? You know, maybe copies of your birth certificate, driver's license uh, information, insurance records, bank records. What I always tell people is add your tax records. Um, uh, actually call it other. And the easiest thing to do would be name it as uh, 2021 tax returns. Document location, you know, file cabinet in basement, wherever it is. But then upload a copy. Our accountants are giving us these documents already electronically anyway. So upload and store a copy just makes it one step easier for family. You know, we can go ahead and save that. Um, there is a certain place for, uh, as we looked at, you know, the website logins, which is really easy to add. It's either a general website or social media. If it's social media, we give you the low hanging fruit, but there's always the other option. Um, because when I originally created this, Clubhouse wasn't a thing yet, right? So we're going to add that, the URL, username, password, challenge questions. Tell your family what you want done with it. Disable the account. Take it down. Um, same place for insurance policies, place for all your household accounts to list out, you know, the, the utilities, the cable. Because, again, think about it. You know, we used to get all these bills in a mailbox at home. So family could track things down and find it. We don't get that anymore. In fact, most of the things that I pay for are on uh, recurring and auto pay. And so they're going to need to know where those accounts are, track them down, and close them out. Um, a good friend of mine uh, said to me, I wish I had known mom wanted to be cremated before I buried her. True story. Um, you know, here's the thing. When someone dies... Uh, family members have, uh, on average, about 120 decisions that they have to make in the first 48 hours. Um, the first one being the institution to handle the arrangements. My father-in-law was still on his bedroom floor upstairs. Michelle and I were in the living room with the medical examiner, and he said, where should we take dad? We're in shock. <laughs> He's been gone for an hour and a half. There's 10 funeral homes in the city. I don't know where to take them. Make it easy for family. Take me to a Crest funeral home. Do you want to be buried or cremated? Final resting place. Who do you want to perform the ceremony? Is it going to be religious or just a memorial service? Do you want your, your pastor or your rabbi? Who should the pallbearers be? Would you want anyone to speak at your memorial service? Any special music, notes, food, drink? What about all the flowers and donations? Grave markers, notes. And everything is free form with no character counts. So you can write anything you want uh, in these sections. Um, the first one's my favorite. I put this in here because I figured I, I want someone to say something really nice about me. After I'm gone, I should help them out and write it. So we can provide that information. Um, <clears throat> hey, this is a fun one. I like this because a lot of people don't have uh, a personal property memorandum uh, or it's not up to date. So this is because mom promised the China to both the girls and they will fight over that China. So we can add a gift. And what is the gift I want to give? And let's say it's, uh, you know, my tools. And who should receive it? Um, my son, Tim, 
Under what circumstance? My death, the death of my spouse or partner, death of both of us. So many times it might be a death of both of us. In this case, my wife doesn't use the tools. So, you know, I could just say my death and I could put a value to it. But I know that Nick and Tim are going to fight. So I'm going to make it fair. Um, you know, my, uh, my tag or watch. I'll give that to Nick. My death. Boom. You guys have probably heard about these people that, uh, you know, grandma's telling everybody later on in her years, would you just put a sticky note on, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want in the house. Um, this just makes it a little bit easier. And I don't know if it'll keep uh, our family members from fighting or not, because that's what they're so good at. I mean, we had family members literally fighting over a pair of binoculars, which blew my mind. Uh, but things hold sentimental uh, value to people. So I think if family members see, okay, well, dad wanted uh, you to have the, the watch and me to have the tools, so be it. Um, and they can, they can barter from there. There's also a place to lift your elder care preferences, healthcare directives, um, place for the pets. Uh, most people don't have a pet trust. So who's your pet? What type, specific breed, about how old are they? And when something happens to me, where should the pet go? What are the care instructions, temperament, behavior issues? Who's the veterinarian? Are there medical issues? If so, what are the current medications, dosages, and schedules? Where do you keep the med food and supplies? And then any end of life instructions uh, for the pets. And for veterans, uh, we pre-populate this with the uh, uh, federal VA, but what most people do is they'll go ahead and add in their local uh, VA uh, with the address, put in their, uh, their service number, their DD-214 number, what branch of the military did you serve? What were your dates of service? Uh, and then upload supporting documents, uh, such as your uh, discharge records, et cetera. I know I'll never be able to find my dad's discharge records uh, from his years in service, but I'll be able to put them in there. Now, here's something exciting. You guys are going to be first ones to know about it, sort of, because Bill mentioned something in the email that went out. So our dev team has been furiously working through the holidays so that next week and maybe sooner, right below this section that says documents and accounts, but above end of life, there's going to be a section called Video Vault. This is a place where you can upload and store videos, personal notes to family. Um, you know, I want to be able to pick my smartphone up when I have some you know, brilliant thoughts that I want to share with my, uh, with my kids. And, uh, and I can record a message and say, Hey, if you're watching this, it's probably not really great news, but, uh, you know, here's my words of wisdom or a final, uh, note to your spouse, uh, or other people. So we'll be able to upload those, uh, and store them securely, uh, in the vault. All right. Now, again, I want to get back to, you know, I showed you a completed one first. The premise there was, hey, if I don't make it home tonight, wouldn't this make it so much easier for family to be able to go ahead and just uh, just click on, on this and, and have this information? I think we'll all agree the answer is yes. When you start your free trial, you're going to go in and there's nothing in there. And again, it's like, wow, I've got so much stuff. Do the easy stuff first. Simply build that roadmap. Uh, well, you can do it while you're sitting watching uh, Yellowstone on Sunday night. You can do it while you're watching the football games. On I just say that because I'm so addicted to that show. And now I'm very upset because it's not going to be on again until like summer. Um, but you can do it while you're watching TV. Um, you know, again, easy enough to go to bank accounts and say, I have a checking. It's a chase. 
That's account number. I'm not going to put that because I'm just going to build a simple roadmap. Because we know where we bank and it's safe. And under insurance policies, I know I have life insurance and I know it's with Prudential. That's all I'd have to put. I could make it really easy for my family if I know that uh, my insurance agent is a guy named Forrest Roth. I can say that. Now I'm making it super easy for family. They say, oh, dad's got life insurance potential. Here's the insurance. They can Google that stuff. But it beats them going on a morbid scavenger hunt. Why do I call it morbid? Because it was kind of morbid digging through my deceased father-in-law's stuff, going through his wallet, trying to find, all right, what credit cards did he have? And that's not going to do my kids any good because most of uh, the things I uh, uh, pay for, I use my smartphone now. I'm an old guy, but I'm into technology. So I don't really carry a wallet much. So now the kids are going to have to go on that morbid scavenger hunt through my dresser drawer and look for the other wallet that I have with, with credit cards and stuff in it. Well, this will just make it really, really easy. So, um, Bill, you've been through this a lot. Um, what have I missed? I think you nailed it. And there's been lots of great questions in the uh, the chat. So I've got some good questions for you. Plus, I love that you what you really highlighted was just taking the small pieces, just take the easy steps. I was so overwhelmed by this when I first started because I'm like, I'm not a super detailed person, I'm much bigger picture. But when John talked me through it, he's like, well, you don't have to have all your account numbers from the beginning. Like that's like my worst nightmare, right? Is tracking all that stuff down passwords. So when I just broke it into small pieces and loaded it in there, it all started coming together. And then you start, I started using it as a life management tool. Like you can use this while you're alive and then your loved ones can use it when you're gone. But it's really nice to have all this stuff. Like my address list, when when something asks for my previous addresses, it's devastating to me because I'm a, a gypsy. I, I'm on the road. I just, I've lived on the road my entire life. I've moved every single year. I have so many previous addresses, almost as many as years as I've been alive. So using this as a, a tool for that, having everything in one place is really uh, beneficial as well. It serves uh, two purposes. Now, John, are you ready for Q&A? You betcha. All right, I've got three great questions we'll kick it off with, and then we'll, we'll open it up. So if you're on the call, I know Lisa's been going through it with us on the call. Maybe she has some questions. It, we'll use the raise hand feature to ask those, but let's ask these right now. So Gail has a great question. She says, can you pay annually via auto pay? So when you pass, the account doesn't close. Is anyone notified if the payment's not made? For instance, our life insurance has a person to contact if the annual payment is delinquent. Gotcha. Well, um, so so what family typically does, so the short answer is there's um, no way to, you know, keep that going short of, so if I die and I paid annually and now uh, my family uh, has access to it, but they want to maintain it for another year or so. Okay, again, they can print everything off and have copy of everything. Um, but if they want to maintain it, the simplest thing to do is uh, they literally just uh, go in and change the email address to their own. So now they have, have that. They go in, change that, change the password, save it, and now they have access to it. They can put in their own uh, credit card on it because you can always change the credit card in the billing section. Because I think the assumption too is, John, right? Like if if the if a user were to pass, then in, almost instantly, whoever their person was would have access to the information to help take care of the end of life stuff. So they'd be in there and they would know that that account is there. And then you'd get the regular notifications from My Life and Wishes about exactly. that. Exactly. And the, uh, you know... So, so some people say, you know what, I just don't want an ad and authorized user. I just don't trust anybody right now. 
So one of the things is when you become a user, a page user of the account, we mail out a, an actual physical packet to you in the mail, a fulfillment kit. And in there, we include, see, it's great when I'm in my office, Bill, I have stuff at my fingertips. So we, we have this, this envelope and this card. And so true of the matter is, I joke about my son logging the account. None of our six kids have access to our account. And uh, my girls hate it when I talk about death. They know I'm in this business. I do it all the time, but they don't want to talk about when daddy dies. I get it. So on this card that comes in the packet, I can put in my login credentials. It has the URL. It's got our phone number to call. It goes in this envelope. And my girls know that if something bad happens to daddy in the dresser drawer under the socks on the right, you're going to find this envelope. It's going to provide everything you need to know. And any event that is not there in my office, in the desk drawer under where I keep the pens and that blotter thing, there's another one. That's because I'm a little anal. So I want to make sure there's, there's two locations. So a lot of people will do that. Uh, it's almost like that two-factor security. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All right. Great question. Uh, we got another one from Dorada, and I answered in the chat, but I wondered. I'd, I'd love to hear it from you as well uh, regarding the veterans. She says, "My husband is a veteran, but not connected to any local VAs. Would that be a problem?" Not at all, because you can still, uh, you know, list the uh, his uh, branch of service, dates of service upload the, uh, you know, all the, the military records and, and things into it. Absolutely not a problem. Beautiful. And then Tammy has an uh, in interesting question too. She says, can you talk about the four advisors section? I would like to refer clients to this. Hey. Oh, the four advisors on our website. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I'm yep. thinking inside, well, it's the advisors. Yeah, so um, here's how that works. Um, advisors, uh, state planning attorneys, predominantly are our number one uh, client. They provide it to their clients. So the way it works is the estate planning attorneys work with us. They pay us an annual fee for their firm, and that provides unlimited deployments for them for all their clients. So we have some smaller firms. They may only have 10, 15 uh, clients in the platform. Uh, larger firms, 500, 600. But here's the thing. If you refer a law firm or an attorney to us and you let us know you've referred them, and usually they'll tell us, we will actually pay a, a little referral fee back to you because we think everyone should win because I'm on a mission to help a million families avoid what we went through. And I know I can't do that alone. And so the best way to do it is do it all together. And then I want you know, everyone to benefit uh, from, from what they do. Excellent, John. I love that. And we'll have more information about that kind of opportunity for you too. But also, I think Tammy um, is an advisor in an advisory capacity. So John, if she is an advisor and would like more information on that, uh, whether it's a financial advisor or a life insurance agent, which she is, um, how would somebody reach out to you? What's the best way that you'd like to do? Yeah. yeah, and that's great. And we also do work with, uh, with life insurance agents. Um, <laughs> Is a great way to provide them, uh, you know, their, their documents so they, they don't get lost. Um, the easiest thing to do is uh, just pop me an email. It's John, J O N, because my dad knocked the H out of me when I was a kid. Um, so, John, J O N, at mylifeandwishes.com. I'll type that in the chat. Oh, perfect. As well. Yeah. yeah I'm, I trying to talk and then look over at the chat and I'm not that. No, I, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, send me, send me an email. Um, you know, what I usually do is uh, with advisors, 
we'll just jump on a you know 20 30 minute zoom uh probably be shorter uh in your case because you've already seen the inside of the platform right. and, and what it does and uh and we can discuss ways to provide it to to clients beautiful great question tammy great question everybody now i've got a a few more in here too, but let's jump to the live questions. Salisha, oh, Salisha's on the phone. She's taking care of business. Oh, she's ready. Okay, let's do it. Hey, uh, Bill, uh, I've got a real life question. Uh, an acquaintance of mine actually did die um, last week in his sleep and he was a notary. What do notaries have to do with the state or with their stamp when they die? Yeah, that's a great question. And we, uh, the cool thing is, is we tell that's part of the how John and I connected on this too. This My Life and Wishes is a great resource to add that kind of information. Because if you didn't know this, the uh, every each individual state either has their own rules or they don't have rules. They don't talk about it or they do have very specific rules. Some states even have punishments for the heirs of notaries that don't follow through on these requirements. So I actually created a, uh, I've got a free download. It's a report that shows you the different state rules. The NNA helped me create it. It's at notarycoach.com forward slash blog. I'll post that link in the chat for you as well. It'll show you the different rules, the guidelines, but always guys, do your due diligence and just go straight to the horse's mouth. Go right to your secretary of state or your statutes and just double check what happens. The death of a notary is what the article was that I wrote about it. And then I have a free report on the sidebar of the blog too. So you can see what those rules are. And here's the thing too, is not every state talks about it. The law is often silent about a lot of things in our world, but there's a best practice in the notary uh, public code of conduct has the best practices laid out for you too. So there's a, even if your state doesn't get specific about it, you can talk about it. You can list that in your My Life and Wishes legacy account. You can say, hey, upon my death, you know, destroy the stamp, turn the notary journals into the secretary of state at this address or uh, whatever other specifications you might have. And there's sometimes there's some time constraints. So include that for you as well. Great question, Salisha. I'm sorry about your friend. We do have uh, more questions. Lithia has a series of questions that she sent privately in the chat. Uh, she asks, um, is there an affiliate program? And I think you just touched on that, John. So Letia, not necessarily an affiliate program, but there is a partnership and referral program. If you're interested in that, email john at mylifeandwishes.com. John, she also asked, do you have a competitor out there? Is there other companies that offer what you do? Um, there, there are, and it's interesting. There's, there's really two competitors that are out there today. Um, uh, and... <laughs> There were more, but they're gone. Um, you know, they got acquired or, or swallowed up. The, the oldest is a company called Everplans. They're out of New York City. Um, they're very similar to our program. Um, the, the difference is ours is more intuitive uh, and easy to enter information. It's, it's, it's less like a, uh, uh, a Microsoft Office folder kind of system. Um, we have separate uh, uh, tabs within our platform for each user and their shared information. And we'll be the first ones uh, with video uh, in in a day or so. Yeah. Yeah. According, they, as I told Bill, according to my, my development team, they said uh, we're ready for live release by Friday, tomorrow. And so whenever I talk to people, I say, sometime next week, that'll be, that'll be out there. You've learned the lesson the hard way with development. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Indeed. I am uh, very excited about the video, though. I think it was, that adds a nice touch to be able to leave a video message for the people that you love or um, upload certain videos that maybe are memorable um, from the family. So that's a, such a cool feature. Uh, yeah, and, and there will initially be a limit. It's um, for, for those that know a little bit about recording and those things. So initially, the limit's 500 megabytes, which, um, you know, if, if I record an ultra high 4D, um, that'll give me about a three minute conversation. Uh, on the other hand, if I, uh, you know, shoot it in, you know, 720, 
um, you know, 15 uh, minutes plus if I go down to three, what is it, 80, uh, you know, much, much longer. Um, what I tell people is if you have, you always have the ability, if I record a video on my smartphone, I can see, ah, crap, it recorded in, you know, 1080. Um, I can save it and lower the, the file size yeah. and to be able to upload that. Or I can do multiple, you know, my legacy part one, record <laughs> my yeah, legacy right. part two. <laughs> uh, Mark says, can you ask John if he can create an affiliate link to My Life and Use Wishes users to provide this service to a client? So Mark, we're actually working on some cool stuff um, to help spread the word on that. So I think that is coming in the meantime. Uh, John really likes to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the partners, uh, the attorney partners, the uh, advisor partners along that way. So the best way to do it is just to either reach out to John or make an introduction. I encourage you, if you're interested in that, if you've got clients that you clearly see the value because it's here, guys, there's part of it. There's something else growing here, right? We, our clients are estate planning attorneys. John's clients are estate planning attorneys. There's a lot of synchronicity here. If you see that and you're interested in forming that kind of relationship, I encourage you to reach out to John and uh, start paving the way with that reputation or that uh, relationship. You know, it's interesting, and I'll just add this. Um, you know, beyond the fact that it's a great document delivery for estate planning attorneys, it does a couple of really cool things because they find ways to, to monetize it too. So, I mean, you know, everyone's looking to make money. Um, but here's what's interesting. It's a huge differentiator for the attorney, for whoever the, our partner is, because they're having a much deeper conversation than they've ever had before. You know, it's always been with the attorneys, it's about, let's make sure we get the documents in place, they're correct, we preserve the wealth, and we do our best to keep family out of probate. We take it a step further now with this, we say, we're going to do all those things and make sure we do that, but we're also, as a firm or an attorney, I'm very concerned about what the experience is going to be like for your family, because all these things that are stored and included in here, these are not things that are listed out in trust documents, right, for the most part. So, so it's a game changer for them. It's, it's a huge differentiator. Um, it leads to the next generation of, of clients, uh, the, the families, children, and, and the people that are, they work with and settling the estates and those things. So, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. I think that's going to be it. Lethia, I see your previous question, but it's already been answered. So it'll be in the replay for you just about uh, who has access and when, if something does happen. So I, if there's no further questions, let's leave it hanging. If there's anybody else that's been sitting in the, in the background, but still has one, I'll give you a few seconds to raise your hand. All right. I think we'll wrap it up. We got, let's uh, show John some love in the chat. Thank you so much, John, for first, for creating a tool like this that brings peace of mind. What a gift uh, to us, our loved ones, and to the community. And thank you for your generosity and, uh, for uh, the free trial, for the $30 off. Uh, there's no obligation, guys. You can start the 30-day trial right now and just get in and tinker with it. Just go to mylifeandwishes.com. No credit card required. You can try it. The cool thing is we're going to be here every single Thursday doing this exact training. So if you want to invite other notaries, if you want to invite other business people, your clients, your friends, your family to a training like this so they can get familiar with this, please do. This is how we change the world. John, thank you for being a part of this with us. Oh, I thank you so much, Bill. I value you and my friendship uh, and, and bringing me to your people. And the one thing that we will be doing probably in February for uh, users, so anyone that becomes uh, a subscriber, entirely up to you, um, we're going to start a series of uh, weekly trainings for, for those people as well, where, where I go a lot deeper because I can talk for days on this and ideas and things to store and just kind of techniques. And things. So anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you and make it an awesome day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for carving out some time on the Thursday. The replay will go out via email. I'll also post it to YouTube, my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash notary coach. So you can check it out there. And again, if you want to start the free trials, just mylifeandwishes.com. You guys have a great Thursday. Bye-bye.